Hello everyone, welcome to HappyMath.com. So today, uh, we will use the Excel program to construct the frequency table, also frequency histogram. So please look at the example. So I just select a uh, random data, it's about uh, 40 data, and then we want to construct the uh, frequency table and also frequency histogram. So I try to make uh, frequency table and histogram at the same time. So please watch this out carefully. Then it can be really useful tool for you to um, just to progress your own data, frequency table and histogram. Okay. So to do so, we need to organize data either ascending order or descending order. So ascending order means you make data from the smallest to, to the largest. Descending order means largest to smallest. But we try to make uh, smallest to largest in this case. Okay, then select all data set. And when you look at the top part here, you see A to Z, this button, and click that. Then you click sort smallest to largest. Then as you see, all the data sorted by from the minimum to maximum data set. Of course, you can do sort by descending order, then sort largest to smallest. You see that? Right? But as I told you, this time we want to use smallest to largest. Okay? Right. Now, let's find out range. So range means uh, largest data minus smallest data. Okay? So whenever you uh, input any data set, don't forget put equal sign. And I'm going to find out largest data minus smallest data and enter. Then that's our range. So based on that, we can determine class width. So this time, let's determine class width for six classes. Okay? Of course, you can do five classes, seven classes based on your own data set. But this time, this example, we construct the six class frequency table. So class width means range divided by number of class. I told you this time we do six classes. So I'm divide, I, I divide that by 6. Then you got 2.83 something. Then you round up. So it becomes 3. So class width case, no matter what you get, you always round up. Even though you got 2.1 something, still 3. Even though you got exactly 2, still take 3. Because we want to make a wider range so that it guarantees we can input all the data into the each class. That was the reason. Okay. Then now we're gonna find out lower limit and upper limit. So lower limit usually start from our minimum data value. Okay. So click that equal to our minimum data. And because the class width um implies interval between lower limit or upper limit. So next class lower limit equal to uh, previous lower limit plus that's class width which is 3. Okay. Then now I click that and scroll down 4 more. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then this become 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 lower limit data. Okay. Now upper limit data that is usually one value lower than next class lower limit. So the reason is, so upper limit means uh, the maximum value for this class, so that this value and the next class lowest value, uh, smallest value, they won't be conflict to each other. That was the reason we substitute one from this data. Okay, now I scroll that, I, I click that, scroll down until here. 
And the reason I don't do until one more class, because there's no data here, so you got minus one. So we don't want that. So instead of taking it, you click that equal to this uh, previous upper limit value plus three. Okay. So I told you class width also means interval between upper limit as well, right? Okay. Then now uh, we're going to find out lower class boundary and upper class boundary. Okay. The reason we are finding lower class boundary and the upper class boundary, so one characteristic of the histogram, each bar must touching each other. It means there's no gap between each classes, basically. Okay? So fortunately, this is whole number data. So whenever you get the median between uh, previous upper limit value and uh, next low, low limit value, then uh, it may be resolve a problem. So what's the median between 18 and 19? Simply you add 18 and 19 and divide by 2, then you will get 18.5. Finding 18.5 from the 18, you will add 0.5. But from 19, you subtract 0.5. So we apply the same procedure for everything. So all the lower, lower limit value, you subtract 0.5. All the upper limit value, you add 0.5. Okay? So lower class boundary, that equal to lower limit minus 0.5. And click that, scroll down until six classes. Now, upper class boundary equal to upper limit plus 0.5. The same thing, click again and scroll down. Okay? So now we can double check. So, first class upper class boundary and second class lower class boundary, yeah, the value are same to each other. And the same thing as second and third, 21.5, and third and fourth, 24.5, they are all equal to each other. So now we are making sure when we construct a histogram, each class bar, there's no gap okay, between each other. Okay, then now, uh, based on uh, those four columns, we can construct both frequency and then histogram at the same time. Okay, ready? All right, then let's go together. So click data first, data here. Then now you must have data analysis feature. Click that. Now click histogram. Okay, then it will ask you input range. Input range means your data. Okay. So I'm going to click include title, all this data. And bin range. I will choose for upper class boundary. Okay, and now we click label. If you if you don't see uh, like you, you see like that, then you must click that. And also chart output also should be clicked. Okay. Now okay. Ta da see now you see frequency and histogram, right? So you don't need more row here, so I'm going to delete that. And simply copy frequency part, and Ctrl C, and move to original worksheet. And I'm going to put it here, not right next to the upper limit, and Ctrl V. Then now you have frequency column. Okay. Now we can also just go back to uh, sheet number three and copy the histogram. And going back to our original worksheet and just a uh, uh, control V then now we have a histogram also shown here but oh my god what is happening here you know before I told you you know histogram case each bar there's no I mean the between bar there's no gap here no gap but this graph show so much gap I don't like it so let's fix it together so right click please just, uh, just uh, moving your mouse, any blue bar here, right click. Then you see a format data series and 
cap width just make zero okay see now uh, there's no gap between here but when i see even though it is correct way but i still want to see some lines so that it can be divide maybe histogram so even though the gap width zero is the correct way why don't we take one so that we can see maybe at least um boundary here okay again the reason i choose one so that i at least can see boundary but that's small enough so it looks they are touching each other so it's okay okay now making a little bit longer then looks much prettier and you can also click chart design and maybe you click other design here like that or like this like this oh i like this one so i'm going to choose this one or you can choose maybe uh, many other design that's fine too okay i'm going to choose this one and right click one more time and format data series so make sure this is almost one percent like one percent okay so now you see it looks touching each other but i can also see the boundary that's good okay so we almost finished so now uh, i'm gonna find the midpoint so midpoint means average between lower limit and upper limit so just click equal sign and then don't forget open the parentheses because it is following the pandas so lower limit plus upper limit close parentheses divide by 2 then 17 is the midpoint for this first class here go back to first value and click scroll down okay then it automatically calculate each class midpoint for you okay so next one is the relative frequency okay so relative frequency means percentage value but in statistic we use it as a decimal number okay now how to find it so to do so you need to find out total frequency first so i'm going to click this button instead of equal sign because i'm adding more than uh, i'm adding multiple numbers then i better click this one and then enter okay so i have this amount of data and now each the relative frequency you can make it equal to each frequency divided by total frequency which is 40 okay so now click that and scroll down then it will calculate each class relative frequency awesome right okay now last one is cumulative frequency so cumulative, cumulative frequency means we try to accumulate each class frequency so as you see the first class we can only see this frequency so just uh, equal to five but from the second you are adding second class frequency plus previous one so click like that and now you click that and scroll down so then the last row must be equal to our total frequency okay so to make it a little bit prettier so i'm gonna select all this table and then make make a border and all borders then it looks also pretty as well okay so that's all about uh, using excel to construct the frequency table and its frequency histogram i hope this video helps you to understand how to do it and then i'm going to see you with different videos soon all right thank you